and then when I when I, I decided to go into training for general practice, partly because I couldn't be up at night, and most hospital jobs involved doing these these difficult shifts. So, um, and then I chose a general practice setting because I genuinely wanted to try to make a difference, and um, I wasn't particularly interested in going to some comfortable, leafy suburban middle class practice. I wanted to mm. get my sleeves rolled up and try to make a difference in. Uh, you know where the, where the where the greatest problems were, and and chose a practice in in the inner city. Um, and looking back, it's interesting. It was a hugely stressful environment because the the need was overwhelming, and I I wasn't I'd never I hadn't really learned clear, distinct boundaries. I, I was trying to. I was it's, it's both naive and probably a bit. Um, uh, grandiose but it's trying to solve all these problems which were mm. social socially intractable problems they were difficult problems and they weren't really within the grasp of a, a young doctor to to solve so i go home at night overwhelmed with the, the workload which couldn't really be contained in the normal working day um frightened i'd forgotten something or i'd missed something out or uh that i wasn't uh on top of things as much as i should be um I started to compensate by going in really, really early, be at my desk, you know, very early uh, before the day properly started to try and get ahead of things, uh, rather than starting to work out where my where my boundaries were and how could, I could healthily uh, manage the workloads without trying to, to you know, save the world. Um, and, and looking back, I think now with the benefit of hindsight and a, bit, a few years of, of um, experience, you know, I feel quite sorry for that young doctor that was not mm. equipped to deal with problems the other thing i found really difficult was just how, how challenging life could be i was seeing young people dying and getting horrible diagnoses and um a lot of a lot of tragedy a lot of social tragedy but a lot of, of physical health stuff and, and mental health difficulty and of course some of these patients were had alcohol and drug problems which i i, I always had a I think partly because of my background felt sympathetic and, and you know did my best, but I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't know enough about addiction. GPs are not. I can only remember one lecture about alcohol from the whole of my university career, and that was to do with liver disease. It wasn't to do with managing addiction. Yeah. So there wasn't an emphasis on it. But I did. I did. I think it's true to say I, I did my best to listen uh, to my, my patients that had alcohol and drug problems. What, what was Quite interesting at that time was as, as as my as I started to decompensate and the anxiety from not being on top of things during the day uh, increased and you know I'd be thinking about work when I wasn't at work um, and I dreaded coming back from holidays uh, and the Monday mornings were particularly and Sunday had begun began to feel anxious about going in on Monday because I felt out of control and overwhelmed a lot of the time um so i was starting to manage that by drinking uh, when i wasn't at work because that that seemed to soothe the anxiety um and then i became vaguely aware this is a really interesting thing again in retrospect looking back the ability to split what i was drinking versus what my patients with alcohol problems <laughs> were drinking um, the amounts weren't that different, at least I was catching up with, with some of them. And yeah, I was going into work, I was wearing, appearing in a suit, um, driving to work, you know, doing a full day, seeing patients. Um, and they were really busy days with, with long consult, well, not long consultations, lots of patients, short consultations, but long surgeries, long, long yeah. um, patient surgeries. And then um, with patients added on at the end who needed to be seen urgently and then house calls to be done at lunchtime and then trying to race back from the house calls in time to start the afternoon surgery there was no time to breathe um I, these patients coming in with alcohol problems um and i'm taking a history from them and a bit of me is thinking gosh i'm drinking just about the same as this person is but i can't have a problem because i'm here and i'm in a suit and um, <laughs> i'm seeing patients and i'm i'm curing well, I wasn't curing people actually, but I was, I was you know, doing my best. So I think the identity of doctor 
actually held me back in a sense. Um, it was a it was a, a rationalization which um, prevented me asking for our help or at least recognizing the problem for what it was for quite a long time. 